Tom, good to see you again. Um, thanks for your time this morning. I guess we'll start with the the big news that Neil's coming into the club. Um, your reaction to that? Um, well, yeah, just looking forward to getting going with him, really. Um, obviously, comes with a big reputation and um, uh, like obviously a massive CV and he's a well-known name in football. Um, so... Yeah, I'm just looking forward to getting going now. Um, obviously, got the game tomorrow, which I think hopefully it should give give everyone um, that new manager kind of lift and bounce, um, even without him taking charge. Um, and then we'll get working from Thursday with him. Yeah, I was going to say that with the game tomorrow. I guess between you guys as as players, have have you felt that little bit of a boost since since the news? Well, it's just obviously having things put put in, like set in stone and confirmed that this is what's going to be happening. This is how we're going to go to the end of the season. Um, so it's good to get that sorted. And I'm sure like every time there is a new manager, it's um, back to a, a fresh start for everybody. So everybody be eager to show what they can do. Players that perhaps haven't been involved will be wanting to show that they can be part of his plans. You've played with him in, in your career, Tom. Does does it feel like he's what you need at this stage of the season, given where the club are? Well, yeah, I mean, you're not going to get anybody that's more experienced um, and knows what it's all about. And there's no kind of... Um, it's not an experiment in any kind of way. You know what you're going to get exactly, and he's been there and done it. So, um, yeah, it's an experienced pair of hands, and um, I think he'll simplify everything and go right back to basics and make us start doing the fundamentals properly that it takes to win a game. Can you, uh, when you've played under him, can you give us an insight into a, a Neil Warnock dressing room? Because because those of us on the outside of football, you hear so many tales about what it's like inside a dressing room. What is it like to play for him? Yeah, there's never a dull moment. Um, I've, you've got to remember, I was probably 21 when I played with him, so it's a long time ago now. Uh, but from what I've seen and heard since since that time um he seems to be still quite the same so um yeah just never a dull moment um keep everybody on their toes um and probably exactly how you'd imagine really um so yeah but like i say it will it'll probably be um getting those fundamentals right that it takes to win a game and and that's kind of like the the basic things and the basic responsibilities which everybody needs to do to to win games of football. I think a constant theme when when we speak to people who have played under him, Tom, is is there's always that sense of camaraderie under him. Is is that something you echo? Yeah, definitely. And um he does a lot for that in terms of his personality and the way that he is with the players and the way that he man manages people. Um He's a really good man manager. Um, knows what it takes for different players to get the best out of them. Um, yeah, and there's different ways of doing that. Whether it's, I'm sure everybody's seen the videos in in dressing rooms. But equally, he can put an arm around you as well and make you feel a million dollars. So um, yeah, he's got both sides of that. Um, so yeah, just looking forward to it, and it'll keep everybody on on their toes and um, hopefully get that extra 10 20 percent out of every player it's interesting what you say your time at Leeds United under him you you were obviously breaking through you'd just broken through in the last season or two yeah. and then you moved on to Sheffield Wednesday did working under him albeit for quite a small time did that have any impact on your career going forward at all yeah definitely um I mean I did a I think it was just over a season with him um and everybody's got every manager's got their way of doing it. There's no like right or wrong way, but definitely a lot of things that I learned during my time with him, I've definitely taken with me throughout my career. Um, and um, yeah, it's for a defender as well. It's getting those those basic 
like I say, the important nitty gritty bits that aren't maybe that enjoyable to do, but um, they're what make you reliable and what make you consistent. And definitely throughout my career, I've always, there's, there's always times when you come back to and you think of things that he said to you um, what, during that time in the past. And uh, I definitely rely on those throughout the 10 years or so it's been since. And I, I guess now it, it is different for you because you're now an experienced player and you're going to be playing under him and he'll look to you as as one of the leaders in the dressing room from Thursday, won't he? Yeah, hopefully. Um, yeah, we'll we'll see. And um, yeah, but like you said, it'll be a lot different to last time when I worked with him. Um, but yeah, I'm just, just looking forward to it now and uh, want to get going. And obviously, I think that... Working with him will come around pretty quick because we're going to be obviously got got the game to get ready for tomorrow, um, and that's a massive game now. And um, well, we we we're running out of games to to pick up points really, so we need to um, yeah just approach that as best as we can. And equally, we all we all like working with Narcisse. It's it's um, he's 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 going definitely going to be a top coach in the future. I've got no doubt about that. So um, we'll enjoy working with him for that game. Um, and then, yeah, we'll we'll see where we are Thursday um, when the new manager comes in. Yeah, I was, I was just going to mention Narciss as well because there's been a lot of change at the club since he's come in and, and every time he's stayed at the club, he's shown his passion for the club, his love for the club. And, and what you effectively said, Tom, it's it's in a way answered my question. I'm I'm sure you guys as players are hoping that he will continue to stay at this club. Yeah, I'm not too sure what's going to happen um, with that. Um, in all honesty, yeah, not too sure. But just from working with him since I've arrived at the club, uh, um, obviously under Carlos first, and then he's taken over um, for a little period um, over this season. And he's obviously stayed and worked with the other managers. And he's a... He is a top top coach and a, a really good guy, and um, he's he works so hard to make you better as a player. Um, he invests so much time in every single player, trying to make them better. And that's as a player, you can't ask for anything more than that. And he's a, a really good guy as well. And I'm sure that he's got a lot of ambition to be a coach in the future. And um, yeah, I think he'll he'll uh, have a have a like find his way to a good level in the game. I'm sure of that because he's a he's a really good coach. What what was his message to you as a group of players following the Wigan match? Obviously, very disappointed, um, and everybody was very emotional after the game in terms of being frustrated and quite angry and what have you. Um, but in the way. That that he does things. He's, I think, he was saying to me that he's gone home and watched it probably three or four times in full. Um, and for the first, I, I, I came off the pitch. I was, I'm sure, like the fans had the feeling of that last half an hour, and thinking, "Wow, that was." We didn't keep the ball for longer than two or three passes. We were camped in our own half. Um, and that was my overriding emotion coming away from the game. But the first half, the first hour, um, we didn't too, do too badly. We didn't create a lot. Um, but I thought it was a 50-50 game. And then in the last half an hour, it was um, a bit of a disaster, really. Pinned in our own half. Couldn't get hold of the ball. And that's the overriding feeling that I came away with. And I think all the players felt that. But... He's had to show us what went well in that game and equally he had to show us what didn't go well in that game in the last half of an hour. So we looked at both of those sides and um, like any good coach does, it's in, it's it's about rectifying those things um, and that's what he's shown us um, since that game. You mentioned the the fans' frustration there. What What's your, as, a, as an experienced player at this club, Tom, what's your message to those fans? Yeah, I understand it and I get it. Um, it. It's obviously been a really disappointing season and 
the performances have been well below par. Um, so I understand that. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we appreciate their support when it's going well and equally we appreciate it when it's not going well. Um, yeah, so we've just got to go out and just uh, all of us care, do you know what I mean? And the people don't get to see the running stats and things like that. It's not through a lack of effort. That is one thing that it's not through, but we haven't been good enough. Um, and that's that's plain for everybody to see. Uh, we're not we're not scoring goals. We don't look like creating chances, and we're not keeping clean sheets. So it's uh, not a good mix, really. And we need to get better. And they have every right to be frustrated with that at the moment. Tomorrow, as you mentioned, with all the news going on this week, it is maybe easy to forget for a moment that there is a game tomorrow, and it's a perfect game. It's set up nicely for you to go and get that needed response, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but like every game, it'll be a, it'll be a really tough game. Stoke have got a, a lot of individual players who are very good, a lot of good attacking players. So it'll be a tough game, um, but we're scrapping for every point now. Um, and that's how it's got, well, it's been like that for a long time, but that's how it's got to continue. We've got to, we've got to get better and um, we've got to do it for a full 90 minutes. And um, yeah, every single minute, from now to the end of the season is vital and that's how we've got to approach it. Can you take confidence from the fact when Stoke came to John Smith's earlier in the season, you beat them quite comfortably? I think we're both different teams now, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't really look too much into that. And um, yeah, we've just got to approach it as, um, yeah, what it is, a massively important game for us and something that we have to get something from. Um, so yeah, it's just full focus on that now and leave all, like you said, leave the, the managerial stuff till Thursday. Um, but I'm sure that everybody knows that new manager will be watching and everybody will be keen to make a good first impression. Top stuff, Tom. Good luck for it. Thanks for your time. Thanks. 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 Hi right, Tom, you're still in touching distance, still only a point despite the recent form. Does that sort of give you some, some hope, some solace that you can push on now and, and get out of the relegation? Yeah, it's got to, um, it's, got, it's got to give you that hope and um, we know that we've got some tough fixtures because we've just played teams that are in and around us, but I'm not sure what's what game you'd consider to be tougher? Would you consider playing someone who's in the bottom three or would you consider someone in mid-table being a tougher game? Um, so, yeah, we've just got to take each game. Like I said, we can't afford to waste a single minute now um, and we've just got to start picking up points. It did look just before the turn of the new year like things were starting to go your way. You got those couple of wins straight after Christmas and then... It seems like the confidence has ebbed out a bit. Is, is that fair to say? Yeah, I think, well, I think obviously the confidence just comes with the results and the performances and we've not been getting them. And um, yeah, it's as, it's as simple as that, really. You, you, there's examples every single day in sport and in football where um, confidence shows with players not if it's at this level or the very very top level as well and um, we've obviously not been picking up results and uh, um, like I say not scoring goals not keeping clean sheets and um, that's obviously going to have an effect but if you sit and feel sorry for yourself then you, you, you're going to go down without a whimper so uh, yeah it's important that you've just got to get rid of all that and just focus on the next game which is obviously tomorrow and just take it like that and just focus on that and do everything that you can to to get something from it it seems to be particularly sort of late on in games at the moment that, that there's an issue have you sort of come to an understanding as a group as to why that might be happening and how you can put that right um yeah i think um obviously First goal in games is hugely important. Um, and you've seen against Blackpool um, and Hull. 
that we um, then probably went away from what we were doing. Um, and in our position, um, I think Nassie's touched on that the weekend, that when, when the emotions and the pressure is that we have at the moment, I think it's um, it's, a, it's a natural tendency that people might fall into that trap of being a bit bit more on edge, a bit more nervy. But we were shown things from the Wigan game for the first 45 when we were pressing them, pressing them high up, stopping them playing and taking the ball off them. And equally, when we got it, we were, we were passing the ball quite well, moving it and keeping it for periods of time and all that stopped. Um, and we've just got to remember um, it's no good doing things like you said for 45, 60 minutes. Um, equally, at whole 90 minutes, it's got to be 90 plus 10 minutes that you keep doing these things that are getting you getting your positive um, performances. So, yeah, it's about putting it together for 90 plus minutes. I know you and, and Narciss and others have acknowledged it's not been good enough um, regardless, but it has been a lot of away games lately. You've got obviously one more, but then it's three out of four at home, particularly with the new gaffer coming in, who the fans have reacted very positively to. There's a chance there to to have a turning point, isn't there? Definitely, I say it's, it's like that when teams get a new manager, but especially a new manager um, like Neil Warnock, who's got that history with the club, um, and I'm sure it'll create, like you said, a buzz at the home games. And we've just got to play on that. I mean, I love playing at John Smith's. Like it's for me, it's it definitely gives you that little edge. And I think that comes from last year. You know, like all those times that we had at the home home games last year, it created that buzz and that feel good factor. And um, yeah, I definitely feel comfortable playing there and take a lot from that. So I think. Bringing in a manager like this as well can hopefully get, like you said, galvanise everything and get us all together to to give one like f- like f- final push over these last three months. Have you and the lads heard from Neil at all? No, no, we've um, obviously got told yesterday, and then yeah, it's just working with Narcisse for the game tomorrow. Have you had teammates picking your brains, asking what to expect? Yeah, a few, a few have asked me what it's like. I, I think there's a. I'm pretty sure it's just me and Wardy that have um, played for him. So, yeah, um, yeah, everybody's obviously eager to to get started with him. And, um, yeah. Best luck to him. Cheers. And, Tom, it's so bunched up down at the bottom that it really is small margins at the moment. That That must give you confidence that, as you say, if you can just get a couple of results, get a bit of confidence, that it, it's very doable for you right now. Yeah, I mean that's the one positive at the moment, isn't it? It's it's not out of reach, like you say, it is possible. Um, but I think we've just got to focus on ourselves, you know, because if we play like like we did against Wigan, it, it doesn't really matter what other teams are doing because we're not going to be picking up results. Just got to focus on our performance and uh, worry about our fixtures. Worry about getting some points on the board and playing well. And if everybody if everybody else is still bunched up down there, then great. Um, but yeah, we just got to focus on ourselves at the moment. And just just speaking in general, I mean, you've obviously had a few times of caretaker managers over the course of your of your career. Does it sort of put a bit more emphasis on you leaders in the group to sort of share the load for the for the caretaker manager? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um... Yeah, potentially, yeah, um, because obviously everything's changed and it's up in the air for that little bit, but Narcisse has been here for the whole time, so it's not like it's a massive change. He already knows everybody and we know how he works, so we're following him. He's prepped for the game, um, and like I said, I think he's a good coach, so he'll have us prepared for, for Wednesday. And again, Nas has got you a big home win earlier in the season when he was caretaker as well. So that must give you, it's, it, it's one thing being a good coach, but being a good coach has actually done it as well in terms of being, you know, in charge must must help the confidence of the group too. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, when I say like being a good coach, that could take a long period of time to get your ways that you want to do things across. 
but he's got like a realistic approach to it as well. Um, so you've seen the times when he's taken over for a game or whatever. Um, he can quickly adapt to what's needed at that moment, I feel. Uh, I met well, the Stoke and the Cardiff games come to mind that he was in charge because if you watch them, I think we pretty went pretty much went back to basics and it wasn't a great watch and it was probably an ugly ugly performance, but it got the job done. So um, yeah, I think you can do both sides of that and he understands what's needed. And and you know, regardless of the of the qualities of the caretaker coach, is it just a bit of uncertainty when you're in that period and therefore a relief now that you know as you say, it's set in stone for the rest of the season that it's nil. Yeah, not. I don't think. I don't think so. I mean, I'm just speaking for myself because, yeah, I don't really like to use that as an excuse, or yeah, I don't try and let it bother me really. Um, I'm fully focused on just trying to play well, and I think we all are. Um, and at the end of the day, the message that's delivered from the manager or the head coach, whatever, might change depending on who's in charge, but you still prepare and you still ready yourself exactly the same because, um, like you say, throughout your career, you have all different kinds of people managing or coaching you, um, but you're a constant and you you get yourself ready and you make sure that you're ready when that, that whistle goes. So, yeah, it would just be following a different kind of message or a different lead, really. And you, you used the phrase to Louis, you said... It, the next manager it's not an experiment in any way do you, do you think that was important from the club that they you know they went with somebody with a with a track record as it were yeah I suppose so and um, yeah like you said it's just having that track record and that experience and that probably that little bit of know-how um, yeah and it's it's I suppose the situation that we're in it's probably one of the safest options that you'd think that you could you could do at this moment. Um, so, yeah. Um, hopefully we, he can come in and, um, like I say, I think it'll be about getting that 10, 20% out of, more out of everybody. And just on your time with him at Leeds, um, there was a sort of, um, there was a perception from outside that you were, you were a bit of a scapegoat sometimes, but was that just a misunderstanding of him pushing the right buttons with you and and you know treating you in the in the way that got the best out of you? Do you think? Not, not really. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't say that was the case at all, and I don't think that's. Hopefully, that's not the perception of what it was. Um, I actually think that. Well, I started playing for England in twenty ones when he was my manager, so. And there's only, I think, two of us in the championship that were doing that. So, obviously, I was playing all right football under him. Um, and I, I, re I really enjoyed it. And like I said, there's never a dull moment and you're coming into work, it keeps you on your toes. Um, so, I enjoyed that. Um, and I think that he's got, like I said to a question before, he's got a different way with each player. Some, like I'm sure you've seen or read things of players that he's managed in the past. Some players, it might be an arm around them, make them feel like the best player in the world. Some players, he might get onto them a bit more. Um, but yeah, it's different ways of doing that. And I think that he probably got onto me a bit when I was a young lad because I think, well, I like to think that hopefully he saw that I could be a good player yeah. and he wanted to improve me. Mm -hmm. And at that age, I was probably making mistakes that reflected my age. Here and there, and he wanted to get that out of my game. And like I said, over these last ten years, I've taken a lot of messages that I got from him forward with me. So um, yeah, I don't think it was anything like that. And I don't certainly, when it got announced yesterday, that that's not what came to my mind. I was just looking forward to getting to work with him because um, yeah, I know that I know exactly what I'll need to do for him. Um, if selected on a Saturday and that would be the case for every single player they'll know their individual responsibilities and roles yeah that, I mean that's kind of what I was driving at you know you've obviously spoken very very well of him up to now and, and he said some nice things about you since since he left as well so just an example of him treating an individual in the way that he felt got the best out of yeah I think I think it showed that he cared like if he weren't bothered then I wouldn't, wouldn't have been with the first team um, I think people know that like 
over his career. He's always kind of played more experienced players than that. And I was 21 uh, playing centre half for him. So, so yes, yeah, so obviously that's that says a lot. Um, and yeah, him him getting on to me, I'd rather that he was doing that than than not speaking to me and I wasn't training with the first team. So, so yeah. Yeah, as, as you say, if, if you didn't think you were worth the effort, he wouldn't yeah. he wouldn't be on to you, would you? So, um, and you, I mean, you mentioned experienced players then. He, he does have a tendency of going with them. He does have a tendency of, of bringing in players he's worked with. And obviously with the transfer window shut, that's that's not open to him. So again, that, that suggests that you and Wardy will have an important role to play in terms of helping him get his ideas across and, and that sort of thing. Potentially, yeah, I don't know, but it's like when any manager comes in, I think everybody has a fresh start, don't they, and a clean slate, so to speak. Um, and yeah, he's not going to pick anybody just off the name. I think that he'll probably be watching the games that have been going on and probably be watching Wednesday, so it's up to everybody um, to to show what they can do. And I don't think it matters whether you work with him or not. Um, he'll know exactly what he wants from each player in each position, and you've got to try and do that. And you know, I know, I know that every game you play, you all, you you all try and give your everything. But it w- w- will it have a, have an effect in the back of your mind that you know he'll see the video of Wednesday's game as a team? And... Yeah, it's like it's like anything in life, isn't it? It's that first impression. Mm-hmm. I'm sure everybody will be trying to make the the best first impression that they can. Um, but he's been around the championship for a long time, so. Hopefully, has a, a good knowledge of all the players, which I'm sure he will do, and a good idea. Um, and yeah, um, Thursday we'll definitely find out exactly how he wants to do things going forward. 